This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 89 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Janell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti, and also with us today in quiet mode is Sophia Yagela from Wessa, who has somehow lost her voice. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa podcast on the Horse Radio Network. This podcast is brought to you by the Western English Sales Association, Wessa, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news from manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. A big shout out today to a fellow company under the Horse Radio Network called Leadline. Being a business owner is a big responsibility, but you don't need to figure it all out on your own. The lead line teaches horse business owners the best productivity skills, marketing strategies, money tips, and more through interviews with the smartest and most innovative entrepreneurs in the equine industry. Subscribe to the lead line podcast today and begin taking steps towards building your dream business. Germany-based Mauritius aims to revolutionize the leather jacket market in the U.S. by offering stunning styling at practical prices. Lynn Basket, who's part of a group formed six years ago to introduce Mauritius to the U.S. and Canada market, joins us today to talk about the significant inroads the brand has made in the retail business and its growing online presence, including the use of Instagram to boost sales and raise awareness. We are pleased today to have Lynn Basket who is an expert at bringing in German leather garments to the U.S. marketplace. She's been involved with this with her current company, which is CHR Fashion, which specializes in bringing in fine leather jackets at practical prices. And we want to chat with her about that, about the company, about the leather jacket market. So, Lynn, thanks so much for joining us today on Wisdom by Wessa. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Hope I can share some wisdom. (laughs) I'm absolutely certain you will. I know we talked earlier, your company is about six years old and your business specialty is importing leather jackets that are designed and created in Germany to the U.S. market, the North American market. Talk to us a little bit about how how all that works for the retailers that we have listening to our show. I know you said you had 2,500, but there's got to be a few more that uh, uh, aren't yet carrying the line that that you might want to. Tell us a bit about how an idea comes from a creative design to their showroom. Okay, will do. Uh, So I only want to add one thing there. The the styling is all designed in Germany, but the production is done in Pakistan, which is the world leader in vegetable tanned leather. I'll start by saying that uh, the German company, the Mauritius Group, has been around for 50 years. This year, they celebrate their 50th anniversary, and all they've done for 50 years is make leather jackets. So they have a very well entrenched uh, system as far as design. They have a great design team, uh, QC, on the ground uh, in all of the factories to to make sure that production happens the way it should. So we came to uh, to the, the company already with them having all of that expertise that we could then draw on. So we work uh, direct with the design team and the production team in the German office. They show us uh, the pieces that they're doing for the U- for the European market. And uh, we select from that line and then we add uh, pieces that are better for the U.S. market. So there's always going to be some differences between the, the, uh, the American and the Canadian uh, consumer and the European one. And uh, so we work with the design team to create the jackets that are then right to be exclusive for the USA and Canada. Uh, And we do that. um, It's really an ongoing process. So uh, we send uh, images constantly between uh, our office here and the office in Germany. And we're constantly in dialogue about what we can do and what we can't do. 
we take feedback from all of our stores. We're always looking for feedback from our reps, from our stores. And then we filter that uh, to the design team so that we can add some pieces uh, for the U.S. that are really, we hope, spectacular for the market here. And so far, touch wood, it's been, it's been doing well. The pieces then come here to, uh, we sample them, we, we bring them here to the U.S., we do a grand launch, uh, which moves all around the country. Uh, last uh, one we did was in Dallas, and we took over a Fort Worth uh, saloon, did uh, a full-scale fashion show uh, to launch the line, and we invited retailers to come and join us. So every season, we move that fashion show to a different city and a different venue so that we can highlight uh, some of the different aspects of the line. And then the reps take the lines, and they go to the trade shows, and uh, they do their best to, to work as an intermediary between the retailers and us uh, to, uh, to make sure that we've got something that is going to retail well in the stores. My guess would be that since you've, uh, I mean, six years is a, is a decent time in business, but it makes you a relatively new company, and yet you have uh, 2,500 retailers carrying the line, so you're having a great deal of success. Like any garment business, especially in the Western world, there are new things coming out. How often do you, do you bring out new styles every year, every six months? What does the retailer who's carrying the line expect from you or can expect from you in terms of something fresh to offer the market? Uh, so we launch uh, a new line twice a year. So we launch it in January and we launch it in July. And uh, then we have enough styles in both men's and women's uh, to be able to uh, to carry through that six months. So uh, stores usually will book out uh, styles, this, these few styles to come in January, these ones to come in February because there's a big event going on, these ones to come in March. And they'll take our selection and they'll, uh, they'll work out the distribution that they need for the store. So you're taking care of all of the back-end logistics from uh -huh. point of design to point of manufacturer to the retailer's display area. Correct. Correct. And, and that's, I think that's exciting. That's the way it should work. Anything changed in the leather goods business over the six years you've been involved? The, the shopper has changed. Uh, she is looking for versatility. Uh, she, she and he, they're looking for, although we do sell more women's than men's, um, they're looking for versatility in wear. They shop. It used to be, I think, that people had their favorite uh, shops and those are where they, they went when they needed something. And it seems now that they uh, want to shop everywhere. Uh, they want to shop at rodeos. They want to shop at big horse events. They want to shop online. They want to shop wherever they want to shop. So I think that's been the, my biggest learning over the past uh, six years is we can't count on one avenue. You can't go to a show once a year. You can't do something once a year. Uh, you really have to be watching all of the time because the shopping venues are changing and the, and the consumer is changing about what she what she expects. The, the horsewoman doesn't just want something to to ride on a horse. She wants something also uh, so that she can wear it when she uh, goes into the city. Uh, so the versatility that she's looking for um, is great uh, as far as the, the kind of looks that she's wanting, sometimes more practical, sometimes more fashion. So I would say that that's probably my biggest learning is uh, how versatile we have to be uh, and uh, then how do we uh, stay versatile and how do we uh, what how do we prepare for tomorrow and what it's going to be like tomorrow. Well, that's a good point for us to segue into our very own Wisdom by Wessa horsewoman. <laughs> I knew uh, this was coming. Casey, <laughs> you knew that was coming. I, I, I mean, knew it. Casey I was getting really nervous, does. getting ready already. Yeah, I bet you were. <laughs> Casey actually is exactly as you described. She loves fashion, I know. She has fashion sense and fashion style. I don't, uh, but she does. But she also is a very, very avid uh, horsewoman, happens to have a very hot barrel horse these days. So she's traveling around and people see her. Why don't you pick up on the fashion side and the versatility? Side, 
Well, I'm just sitting here drooling over the pink fringe Zoe jacket <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah, Let's that be jacket honest. Is so well, yeah. You're so right. I mean, when you were talking about, you know, a leather jacket for a woman, especially, um, sure, they can be worn to look classy when you're competing, riding, but also to wear to town, to dinner, or um, whatever the case may be. And I love leather jackets. And I have leather jackets that date back to, you know, like some my mom had bought me in high school. They never go out of style. Right. Um, I literally can think of one that I have from 20 years ago and I still wear it. You would never know. And it's, it's, it's super interesting. So it doesn't, you know, I was going to say, let's talk about the design aspect and where the ideas come from and but the fact of the matter is, is it, it almost really doesn't matter the designs. Um, it's always in. It's always in style. They never go out of style. Uh, you can wear them forever. Fringe will be in from now until eternity. Mm-hmm. I'm certain. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on just the design process and, um, you know, always keeping something new and fresh coming. And and I think you're right about, about the balanced uh, look. So when we put the line together, we have to take into consideration uh, the the core pieces that we need to have in the line all the time, uh-huh. because uh, a great um, basic jacket uh, is our number one style. Her name her name is Sophia, and uh, we've had that style as our number one style for six years. I, I do want to just refer to the fact that uh, Casey, you had said that you have a, a jacket in your closet yes. from 20 years ago, and and. Yes. Uh, there are a lot of uh, people out there, men and women, who will buy one leather jacket and that's all they're going to buy all their life. Uh, and the reason that they can do that is because the, the, the leather will last that long. It's not disposable clothing that they're going to want to get rid of. Uh, so we have to be careful with that in the design to make sure that we're creating some core pieces in every collection uh, that are going to be those favorite pieces that people pull out of their closet for 20 years. For us, uh, that style is Sophia. It's been our top selling style for six years now. It's a core style uh, uh, moto jacket. Uh, we carry it in uh, four colors all of the time, and then we add new fashion colors. We work with WGSN and get the fashion colors for the year. So we add new colors into a core style so that we can cover all of the business that we need with that core style. And then we look to the design team in Germany, who does this all year round, uh, to uh, tell us uh, from a directional standpoint, are the jackets getting a little longer? Are they getting a little bit shorter? Are they getting a little bit wider, fuller, or more narrow? So they create uh, the line, and then we select from what they create and bring it uh, to our line for the U.S. and Canada. And then we know here that the customer, the consumer here, uh, likes things a little bit different than Europe does. So we work with the design team to add a fringe here or there, or to add a cutout, or to change the sleeve, or to do something which we think is uh, going to be better for the U.S. and the Canadian customer. So that way we can have fashion pieces in the line, and we can have core pieces in the line. And uh, in addition to the, the... person who wants one jacket for 20 years, you've got uh, uh, a person out there who wants 20 jackets. <laughs> I, and, yeah, I want both. I, <laughs> I keep them all. <laughs> yeah, and, and we try to supply both customers. <laughs> yeah, I just want to keep adding to my collection. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, and then one day my kid will take them all and it'll be fine. But um, mentioning the Sophia jacket how many years you said that's been your like your staple jacket for a very long time yeah since we started six years ago it's been our number one style and if I take it back uh, to the German company before this uh, so the company has been 50 years Mm -hmm. as long as they've been making this style it's been their number one so um, I know men's started first before the women's but the that this women's style is probably 30 years old in Germany at oh, least 30, 35 yeah. years. In Germany. And I mean, it, it'll never go out of style. And I just yes. wanted to mention you guys have multiple colors in that jacket, not just a, you yep. know, your a typical black. I'm looking at the mango color, which I yes. like think I 
might need to have. Um, <laughs> I just picture it with like turquoise jewelry. Just saying, you still carry that staple jacket all the time. Um, is that the only thing you change about it? Is the color? Is there anything else that you can change about it? Maybe like location of zippers or? No. So that style never changes. Okay. At all, other than color. Uh, but we'll have lots of different uh, uh, pieces in the collection. So sure. uh, from a lady's standpoint, uh, we have um, about 40 different styles uh, mm -hmm. per collection. Uh, so so yeah. if we're looking for a shorter one, we're looking for a dip dye, we're looking for a fringe, we're looking for whatever those other details are, they'll be covered through the other styles. So when I think about, I, I kind of try to sit here and pretend maybe I'm a retailer and what would be, you know, wh wh why why would I carry your product? And it's like a no fail. All the things that we've mentioned, leather never goes out of style. This is these are tried and true styles. This Sophia especially is a number one seller. Always has been. They're timeless and they're classic, mm -hmm. and they're beautiful. So uh, if you'd like to add any more points to that benefit of retailing your product, besides those that I mentioned. Uh, so I'd like to, to add the discussion about price, um, and I don't want to get into detail, but I do want to say that uh, we are unmatched from a price standpoint, and that comes from the volume that they do in the German office. So they might sell uh, 10,000 of a jacket. Uh, we sell 200 of a jacket, but we can tag on to their production. Uh, which gives us huge benefits from a pricing standpoint. And uh, we, we, every step along the way, we cut out as many costs as we can so that we can pass those costs on to the stores, the retailers, mm -hmm. and they can pass that on then uh, to the, the consumer. Yeah. Because we and, want to have them wearing 20 jackets, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm your perfect customer. But <laughs> I always focus on the women's products, but you know, equally as impressive, you know, the men's jackets, um, a leather jacket on a man is that never goes out of style. I buy, mm -hmm. I've bought my dad to, uh, he said, what do I need two leather jackets for? Well, I, don't <laughs> I just have that problem, I guess. But, um, Mike always teases, you know, he he's not into fashion. I'm the fashion person. But I do but own a leather jacket. I was going to say, Actually, I, I own two. Do. I there own two go. leather jackets. Yeah, see, and from a man's perspective, those are probably timeless for you. They probably are. And it's my biggest learning uh, from a differentiation factor. Uh, men buy totally different than women do. Uh, men, for the most part, one, want one jacket. And it's probably cognac or dark brown or black. <laughs> She's been in my uh, closet. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, I feel for uh, what you said about uh, about your dad. Um, uh, they they do want one and only one. Uh, and we've we've seen that and it's guided our design uh, with the men's product uh, to make sure that we're carrying more core pieces in men's and less from a fashion standpoint. And I think you, you hit on something, Lynn, which is the uh, pricing strategy, because most people, when they think of a leather jacket, they see dollar signs. And mm -hmm. of some many people probably have very expensive leather jackets uh, in mm -hmm. their closet, but a firm like yours enables them to uh, expand on the number of leather jackets and the styles of jackets they have in their closet because you are price competitive. I wanted to mm -hmm. add something else, though, and we talked about this. We talk to more and more manufacturers who are finding social media to be a powerful marketing tool. And in your case, it's Instagram. And I think maybe uh, people would be interested in how you use and view Instagram as a sales tool. Instagram has been fantastic for us. All of our retailers, well, maybe not all yet, but many of them are connected to us uh, through Instagram. Uh, we take uh, pictures uh, when we do our, our big launch at the beginning of the season, and then we use all of those uh, lifestyle images throughout the whole season in, uh, in promoting the brand for, for guys and girls. Uh, we supply all of our retailers with all of those images, and then when they post our images or their own of our product, 
we repost it so that we can create more of a collaboration and and keep the pictures going on the on Instagram longer. We also do a number of contests. Uh, the one that we just launched this week is uh, to supply a whole bridal party with leather jackets. Uh, because I think the time where everybody wanted tuxedos and white uh, dresses uh, is diminished. There's still a lot of people who want that, but uh, there are a lot of people who want to uh, to have a wedding their way. So we're going to supply uh, leather jackets to the whole wedding party, whether it be just the girls or just the guys or uh, Anybody within uh, the wedding party will supply them because uh, we think that this is a good way of, of putting a stamp on on uh, personality and individuality. And so we launched that through Instagram and uh, it's it's been fantastic for uh, creating dialogue uh, between different people. Uh, so I, I have to say that uh, Instagram has been very, very positive for us. It allows people all over everywhere to give their input. We've had people on Instagram tell us what they want to see in a jacket, and we've listened to that. Uh, so uh, it's a lot of fun. It uh, it keeps us uh, relevant. It keeps us listening to what people are saying all the time. Well, I think that's uh, that's an excellent example of how social media is impacting uh, the uh, retail world and the brand world, you know, throughout the uh, the WESA world and the Western world. Chat a bit, of, if you will, about where uh, an organization like WESA becomes a uh, a role in the marketing of your products. Uh, so WESA speaks to uh, the versatility that I, that I spoke about earlier. Uh, it uh, the WESA customer, the consumer, understands quality and uh, has a practical need for leather. Uh, I doubt if uh, many WESA consumers are out there wearing fake leather uh, because they they understand the intrinsic value of what leather really is. So we really value our relationship with uh, with WESA because it can connect us to people from all over the world who really have a value for our product. And then it's up to us to take that value and to make it something that is going to be really right for them to be successful with. So um, I think uh, WESA has done a fantastic job on grouping all of the retailers, finding all of the retailers from around the world and bringing them into one place. I think the moving into uh, Dallas was fantastic as far as creating a venue which is easier for uh, people to see everything. So I have nothing but positive things to say about the Wessa show. They've been amazing. Well, thank you. Can I add one thing uh, that hasn't come up? Anything you'd like. (laughs) Thank you. It's the sustainability of uh, leather. Uh, so every now and again on Instagram or anywhere, uh, we get a comment uh, back from uh, someone who who doesn't have an appreciation for leather because they think that we're harming animals in the production of it. And I just want to say that the, the company has very strong ethical practices, uh, very strong sustainable practices. No animal is ever harmed to make uh, a Mauritius leather jacket. All of the hides come from the aftermarket of uh, the meat market, which uh, those, those hides would pile up in landfills if they weren't being used for jackets. So It starts off uh, with a a very sustainable message, and then uh, we take it further with vegetable tanning. Uh, A lot of companies are still using chromium salts in uh, their tanning of the leathers, uh, which is bad for the environment. It's bad for water. Uh, It can can be carcinogenic on the skin. And uh, we only use vegetable tanned uh, leathers in everything that we produce. Uh, just as our way of of making sure that we're going to be sustainable for the future. So for those of our listeners who don't know, uh, maybe the term vegetable tanning is not uh, in their vocabulary, but it sounds interesting. What is vegetable tanning? Uh, So every hide has to be tanned in order to be turned into product. And initially, all of the tanning agents that were used in the softening of the hides were all chromium-based. 
Um, and that chromium then, uh, after it uh, did its work, it did beautiful work on the on the leather, it made it softer, made it supple, and then it went into the wastewater and into the air. So vegetable tanning, uh, there are vegetable products that are used, uh, bits from trees. There are lots of different uh, vegetable natural uh, bases that are used uh, for the tanning agents. And they use this instead of the chromium salts. It's a much harder process. Uh, and the, the leather has to be worked many more times uh, than with, uh, with chromium in order to get that soft, supple feeling. So we do all of that. We, we do all of the work necessary to, to make sure that we've got something much more supple, something much softer, uh, so that it'll match and feel the same as chromium. Uh, but uh, we're using a natural product to do it rather than something which is going to pollute. Does that help? That helps a lot. And I think our uh, listeners, those of those who don't know, I, mean, I, I have some background in the tanning world, so I uh, know how they used to do it. But I think most people, they don't think about the leather or if they think about it, they misunderstand it as those people who have reached out to you. And I think it's important to know that the market wants something sustainable and you're providing your retailers and you're providing your customers with a sustainable product that is being created, including the tanning process in a much more environmental friendly way. Right, right. We see this as the future and we want to celebrate our 50 years uh, the same way the European company has done also. And we think this is the way to do it. Okay. And I think that pretty much covers what we wanted to talk about, Len, but you've been great to uh, talk about this. It's a unique part of the business. It's a business that maybe a lot of people don't know a lot about in terms of importing products designed and manufactured offshore, but are appealing to a wide range of buyers based on price point and style. It's been fantastic. Thank you very much for allowing us to get the word out. You bet. There are show notes for this episode and links from today's show at the wisdombywessa.com website. And of course, we'd love feedback if you have any. There is a contact link on that site. The Wisdom by Wessa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on your iOS or Android phone. You just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and super easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Wessa, where the industry meets.